and hello um, uh, thanks for inviting me for this session and presenting about quantum computing recently i have been working on this area so i thought i will share all my experience and knowledge and what all experiments that i am doing with the quantum computing related stuff the programming related stuff so now uh, i'll share my screen and uh, Uh, is my screen visible? Yes. Okay. So I'm Abhishek Sharma. I work with object automation, and I'm uh, as as a I work in the field of data science, actually deep learning. But recently, I've been working in the quantum computing related stuff, the programming related stuff. So I'll explore. I have explored everything. I'll tell about what is quantum computing and things related to it. So the agenda of the talk of the presentation is that uh, what is basically quantum computing, like how it is very different from our traditional computing. Uh, these two computing methods are uh, totally different. It's not like they, they are similar, they are very different. Then uh, what is the limitations of our classical computers, classical supercomputers, and what type of problems they cannot solve. So we, we know that there are there are certain types of problem classical computers take around years maybe solve or they are it's impossible for them to solve so these are the limitations of classical computer or you could say even classical supercomputer and then uh, why do we need quantum computing what is a bit and how a qubit is different from a bit like both are basically the data unit for a computing device, but how it is different. And then I'll talk about the quantum states and the quantum teleportation, quantum superposition, uh, quantum interference, these topics, and how these qubits are physically uh, represented or devised or actually put into picture. So apart from all the theoretical concept which evolved from quantum mechanics or quantum physics uh, how companies or different firms are trying to represent a qubit like how they are trying to uh, make a qubit so all those concepts and then in the last one open source framework which is quizkit and it has been developed by ibm but now it's currently being uh, open source and it's written in python so anyone can access uh, quantum computer uh, which is uh, in premise of IBM and, uh, and through cloud you could use it and uh, you can actually run your quantum code in the actual quantum computer so I'll, I'll show a demo of it, that also so these things I'll cover in the today's talk I hope uh, like everyone will enjoy it so what's quantum computing uh, basically what all we have studied in quantum physics quantum mechanics quantum theory that the principles of these theories are very different to the classical physics so at the atomic level subatomic level uh, the physics break and new phenomena you know, emerge these phenomena are like your superposition entanglement so superposition phenomena which is very uh, basic to the quantum physics and the when these phenomena emerge so a scientists are trying to use those phenomena to build a special type of computer like that computer will use those properties of quantum physics and do computational thing that's what our quantum computing your quantum computer is but now what's happening is that traditional computers are getting smaller and smaller every day like they are reaching to a point where the laws of physics are not holding well so initially the transistors were big then they are reduced to in the nanometer size 180 nanometer 90 nanometer 60 nanometer 28 nanometer 10 nanometer 8 nanometer like that so the size of the transistor is decreasing so basically in the stretch uh, in a in a in a search to speed up the uh, speed up the computational thing we are reducing the size of the transistor we are reaching to a level where transistor is getting smaller and smaller and laws of the physics are starting started getting break and quantum uh, quantum properties are emerging which are hard to handle 
so we are already on the verge of uh, on on those points i'll give you an example um, this is the merge law and uh, i guess everyone in the electronics knows about it it's a very basic law it's a kind of uh, hypothesis or uh, some kind of assumption ki in a uh, in a rush to speed up the computational power the transistor in a die will decrease uh, will increase two times in every two years so basically the size of the transistor will, will get decrease so this law is holding well from last many decades like from 60s 70s 80s 90s and 2000 the transistor is getting smaller and smaller and smaller so currently in the pitch in the market we see around 5 nanometer transistor or uh, 8 nanometer 10 nanometer 6 nanometer so that the most advanced transistor available in the market is from uh, tsmc from taiwan manufacturing it's a 4 nanometer but if you look at the nanometer scale so you will realize that 1 nanometer is very small so when we reach to this level we are basically uh, we are basically holding few atoms together and we are almost going to the level that we are we have to work we are working with few atoms only so in this nanometer scale the glu the size of the glucose is 1 nanometer which is like it's, it's the size of a molecule so it has maybe mu uh, few hundred atoms or few ten uh, like in few atoms so at that level uh, the quantum effects come into picture and the quantum effect the quantum tunneling effect it breaks the physics law and it becomes very hard to manage these uh, laws uh, to build a transistor or lower the size of the transistor so now the second second step comes is that now using those quantum properties we can we use it to build it something or utilize it at our advantage right so all the companies like all the big corporates and big uh, research companies they are trying to build some kind of quantum computer using these quantum physics uh, this is the news from 2019 it's from google and it said that uh, google officially claimed quantum supremacy so quantum supremacy means that google has officially said that it has able to solve a problem which was which is impossible to solve for to solve it from a classical supercomputer so it means like a problem which can never be solved from a computer classical super, supercomputer it has now been solved by google that second other two news are from the month of november only like from last uh, two months only that two super uh, two quantum computers are be built by uh, two chinese universities and now the ibm ibm is uh, ahead in my understanding I, ibm is ahead in comparison to other uh, research companies in building quantum computers so it has now built successfully built a 127 qubit eagle quantum processor or eagle quantum computer quantum system and it is planning to build a bigger like thousand qubit or maybe bigger than that uh, quantum computer so what's a qubit here uh, qubit is qubit is actually that unit that fundamental uh, computational you could say that data unit or uh, processing unit on which the quantum computer works on right so i'll give you uh, i'll give you explanation what qubit is and how it works and how it is different from a bit right so before going to that uh, let us understand very simple very lame concept of uh, exponential growing and linear uh, growing so when a problem uh, it uh, the complexity of the problem when uh, it increases with exponentially after adding one element that problems are almost impossible to solve with classical computers or very hard to solve with a classical computer because even if you add just one element it will it will grow significantly and for a problem that grows linearly it's relatively much easier to solve so the, the limitation of classical computer is 
that problems which are very complex like which e to the power n or a to the power n something like that not of the order of n or not of n square not of n cube even the n to the power 10 is simpler to solve than a to the power n right so uh, the our classical computers they they are very uh, they're not very you would say optimized in solving these exponential problem because they required a hard uh, very uh, like too much of computational part right so let us take one example of uh, you could say prime factorization of some numbers and traditionally in a computer simple computer how it will do it will try to find the factor uh, kind of brute force or not with a brute force with some algorithm which has an order of o e to the power uh, uh, o n n square or something uh, like to the power n that that's basically the order the exponential order is there so the prime factor of 17 is 1 and 7 the prime factor of 91 is uh, your 191 730 but the prime factor if you try to find of a 232 digit number 232 is not it's a, it's a big number but it's, it's still very small i can write that number in in the screen so but if you try to solve that number using a normal computer it will take almost a year like well, maybe maybe more than a year or maybe my system would not will never able to solve that it may might break in between but the pro point is that such problems are very tough to solve problems that go uh, that are of the order of exponential order right but if we try this using quantum physics or quantum algorithm and quantum computers using the Schwarz algorithm we can do this at the order of n cube log n and this n cube log n uh, it is much 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 it will it will take much lesser time in comparison to e to the power uh, n or something of the exponential order so how is it possible uh, using quantum uh, physics and quantum mechanics that uh, we can do that we can leverage all the possibilities of simultaneous solution and try to use that it's something like you are working with all the solution parallelly and when a solution is reached or when solution is uh, accepted the system freezes at that time so you reach to a conclusion like that so this algorithm works in similar way that uh, uh, it takes advantage of quantum super uh, quantum uh, physics phenomenon and then uh, it uh, boils down to o to the power of n cube So uh, this is the complexity map, map and I'm sure the people from computer science, they know that there are some NP problem, there are B problems and uh, basically the, the problem, uh, the, the problems are being divided into some certain groups which are easier to solve or hard to solve and NP is like the problem that can be easily checked or the p is like uh, the very easy solvable problem and uh, in comparison to that scientists are now they are making a different complexity map for quantum computers it's your pqp so there are certain problems which only quantum computers can solve it can never be solved by classical computer like i said before in this uh, slide that Google claims uh, quantum supremacy. What it meant is that it uh, Google was able to solve a problem which is impossible to solve by a normal classical supercomputer. So uh, that problem, that complexity map is PQP, right? So first type of problem is your uh, exponential gro growing problem. Uh, second type of problems which are very difficult to solve uh with very difficult to solve by classical computer is the simulation problems uh, when you try to simulate any molecule or any nature or climate these things so
so it gets very hard to simulate even when we try, try to build some uh, you could say sensor simulate some sensors and all using those physics tools they take a lot of computational parts and ramps and resources so this is one enzyme which is nitrogenous enzyme and what it does is that it helps in cre uh, converting nitrogen into ammonia and uh, oh, the purpose is not here to tell that nitrogen is nitrogen is for what nitrogen is used for the purpose here is to tell is that it is made up of some iron clusters like f iron cluster p iron cluster and m, m iron clusters these are iron sulfide clusters f e x s y and uh, if you even if you try to simulate these ions in a supercomputer you could do like the maximum uh, size of this ion could be simulated uh, can be simulated in this uh, and the reason being that even if you'll add one uh, electron to this system you have to count uh, you have to add all the forces like every electron to electron interaction or ele electron to nucleus reactant and the problem similarly the problem goes exponentially so like even few atoms uh, or electrons which are interacting with each other the complexity is very hard so this this is the problem like simulating nature climate molecules it's difficult for uh, classical computers to simulate so basically we need a bigger computer maybe much uh, more computational power in comparison to the supercomputer also right so um, now i'll move to uh, the concept of qubit and i'll talk in the comparison of bits so the normally our computer works with bits these are two states basically one and zero so every piece of information is which is stored it's either uh, in the combination of some one and zero uh, be it your image document video any computational things and these fundamental unit is called bits uh, everywhere we heard about megabytes uh, megabits or gigabytes terabytes these things and our normal classical computer it understand bit as the current flowing through a transistor or you could say something is present or not like that so if an electrical signal is present it's one bit it's not it's a zero bit or it's like a switch so when our switch is on it's, it's representing one state when our switch is off it's representing at other state so like that the information is stored and processed like kind of bit manipulation in the uh, classical computers so we manipulate bit or we uh, process bit when we store bit we use it use uh, we use hard drives or ssd the use use semiconductors initially when you use hard drives you use magnetism to store two states right so bits are those fundamental units through which uh, the basic information is stored now what's a qubit so qubit it's although it's similar but very different uh, in comparison to the bit so it has two measurable state like it has two states zero and one you could say or any any two states if, when we talk of physical realization of qubit but let us suppose it has two states but its existence could be in infinite possible states so it it, it exists as possible combination of zero and one uh, simultaneously at a time at a moment and how this superposition state comes from comes from the phenomena of this um, uh, schrodinger wave equation or schrodinger electron wave particle theorem which says that electron can exist both as a particle and a wave at both at the same time so similarly like a, a qubit exists as zero or one both at the same time with some probability although it has two measurable states so when we measure it uh, we basically destroy those we basically destroy the superposition and we get the final state uh, which is either zero or one with some probability like in the case of those 
electron hypothesis or electron theorem of Schrodinger of wave and uh, particle existence. So at a, a classical bit, it has only two values, zero and one. It is always discrete. But qubit, it has infinite values. So it's a continuous from zero to one. It could take uh, any position like that. You can imagine like it could take basically infinite possible state or it's a combination of infinite states. Uh, and when we measure it, it boils down to two states, zero and one or two states, right? And this phenomenon is superposition. Superposition basically a qubit exists in the superposition of two states, like what state it is, it's not fixed at that time. So if I have to give you an analogy of uh, qubit, so imagine you have tossed a coin. So when the coin uh, is in the air, what state it is? Is it in head or tail or what? Which we basically we cannot tell. It is in the superposition of both head and tail, right? It's like a coin has it all the states. One is head, one is tail. These are the definite states. But when it's in the air, we really don't know what state it is. It is in the superposition of head and tail, right? And the states, all these states, be it the head, tail, or combination of head and tail, these are the states of the coin system. Similarly, these some there are some states of the qubit which are actually realized. Okay, so when we measure this coin and when when this coin land, lands in the hand or in the table, uh, the superposition is destroyed. And now, when we observe it, we are making we are observing that it's not either head or this is tail. You can understand the, it from this analogy, although it is not correct, but supervision could be understand with a spinning coin. As a coin uh, spinning in air, it's a combination of uh, or a supervision of two states, right? So uh, the same thing is repeated that a quantum, a quantum system, it's a superposition of some states and when we observe with states yeah one thing that is that when when we observe this coin we do it with some probability so when it land in a land it when it lands in our hand so it lands with some probability or the system ends up in some probability so that's what the probability of that state so that particle that qubit in quantum superposition it exists in different states at the same time with some probability each state has a probability at that time when we measure it we destroy it so the qubit which exists in both the uh, right now with this this qubit this notion of qubit of two states uh, it's now saying that it exists as both zero and one with the same probability so when we measure it uh, we'll get one state or other state with 50 50 probability that what's the uh, like analogies or the hypothesis is right so uh, initially i talked about uh, the schrodinger's uh, wave equation and uh, schrodinger's uh, thought experiment also is one famous experiment actually so uh, he gave this uh, formula of an electron exists as both wave and particle simultaneously at the same time and uh, when we measure it so we destroy the superposition and we we find it that what at what exactly position it is and this like although when he gave this uh, superposition theorem uh, he was very confused to understand this because a thing existing as both the state is like hard to digest so he, he gave this thought experiment or he said that uh, imagine i have a cat and it is inside a box and there is one radioactive element there and some poison is there so after one hour the probability of that radioactive element uh, to decay is 50 percent so when that radioactive element will decay, it will hit the poison, poison, poison will be released and it will kill the cat. Okay. So after one hour, is the cat dead or alive? That's what the question is. And 
in his thought experiment or in his explanation the thing is that it really does not matter is is alive or dead is a cat is uh, dead and alive both at the same time because we don't know and there is no purpose to know what at what position cat is like the deductive element will decay with 50% probability so 50% ch chance that cat will alive or 50% chance that cat will be dead so so uh, so he said that cat is kind of uh, in a superposition of dead of alive wave function so when we measure it when we'll try to when we will open the box and we'll check it that how the cat is if it is alive if it is dead so then then only we'll get to know and then only the purpose is solved before that it is in the superposition of dead and alive like that so um okay so quantum supervision uh, the similar thing that uh, a qubit exists in multiple states at uh, superposition of two states at the same time and what quantum computers do they take the advantage of these uh, encoded multiple part it what it means that they can process almost it looks as they could process much more states at the same time in comparison to the uh, normal bit so when we when we process bits we know that we are processing one or zero but when you are processing qubit we can take the advantage advantage that it has infinite state so when something can exist in infinite state we can build up a system so quantum computer take the advantage of this quantum superposition where qubit exists in superposition of states which is almost infinite right so I'll take a pause here and uh, till now any questions anyone I'll take a pause for two minutes because the session is very large Uh, any questions uh, for Abhishek? Uh, well, on. I think uh, the people can post the question in the Q and A session or a chat window. Okay, sure. I'll I'll check that. I'll check. Yeah, there is a there is a question uh, from uh, Mr. Sini. Looks like okay. uh, yeah. In results, what is the precision rate of classical and quantum uh, computers? Okay, so if you are talking uh, talking about error rate or something. So currently the classical supercomputers are much, much more simulated compared to the uh, quantum computers. So I'll give the explanation of this. The basically, when we realize the qubit, we work at the atomic level, the electrons or the superconducting loops and all. And what happens is that uh, it's very hard to maintain those levels. Like you have to work at zero degree uh, temperature to maintain the state of electron. Like at what direction electron is spinning that is one state so the explanation will come in the other part uh, other half the half of the such presentation but the point here is that even the atmospheric energy will might will be change will can change the state of that uh, electron it can uh, turn it change its spin like that so pre precision rate of the quantum computers is is not that high like the classical computers the their error is almost negligible, but for quantum computer, there is significant error apparently. Okay. Okay, could you comment on Moore's law for below seven or five nanometer, right? So, uh, the Morse law, which is like your transistor will get double every two years. So from last well, last decade, you could see that the transistor is, is getting uh, smaller, smaller, 10 nanometer, 5 nanometer. So all these things, but below 7 nanometer or around those 10 and below uh, nanometers, there is this quantum tunneling effect. 
and those effects are hard to manage to build that uh, transistor so we already see there is some quantum mechanics come into picture into uh, into the transistor level current transistor level and uh, if you go below uh, lesser than 5 nanometer 4 3 2 1 then we are basically working with few atoms and when we'll do that this effect will get, get so prominent that it becomes almost hard or impossible or very difficult to build a traditional type of transistor like to to go that's why there is a debate that now there is an end of Moore's law there is there is some debate in picture research and uh, in, in, in uh, news research that uh, is Moore's law dead or Moore's law is ending because we have now reached to a level where to build those processes difficult extremely difficult it takes a uh, lot of money and uh, research from these uh, fabrication companies okay uh, i'll start again okay so uh, i explained about the classical uh, classical computer classical bit there is one comparison although it's not direct comparison or something but normal uh, if you think of probability so we think of let, let us suppose there is a coin and we cross it so there is some probability distribution in, in the sense that what uh, how head will come how tail will come and eventually so after two tosses for a normal coin the probability is like uh, the head will come half half number of the times and the tail will come half number of times right like very simple uh, stand, standard probability thing but if it if you try to do this with quantum coin uh, hypothetical thing like quantum theory of probability you, you uh, put into this so after two toss the probability of getting one state is one and probability of other state is zero how uh, because this is not actually coining this is the theory which the math mathematical part where it start with negative of something so when we square it with we find the probability although in the in the first step we get the half of one state half of the other state but uh, root of 1 by 2 minus minus root of 1 by 2 it's your uh, you could say the function of that states fun, uh, you could say a parameter of the phase of that uh, states so if you do the calculation the probability boils down to 2 so this is the fundamental difference of a normal uh, coin weight or state like these are very discrete level thing certain and the quantum world quantum theory everything comes in the form of probability uh, so please tell us about the risk of quantum technology and quantum security over network risk okay uh, I, i'll tell that after the present or in the second question session i'll do that so uh, before this quantum superposition like after this quantum supervision uh, there is one more phenomena in quantum physics which is quantum entanglement and it is a very bizarre or weird kind of phenomena like it's a very spooky action at a distance the thing is that when two qubits and they are made to entangle uh, entangled or they are made to unite with each other in some way when they are created or something so it's like they are interconnected with each other uh, in the quantum state world so in they are basically entangled and when i say entangled it means that uh, a, a qubit here will will obey the qubit at the other side like they the both will share some information and this quantum entanglement it has proved again and again that how two particles basically and when they are distance apart like uh, theoretically one could be in the north pole one could be in the south, south pole but they when they are entangled they are interconnected and they behave in certain way so how these two entangled particles when they work uh, they share information 
they actually enable us to manipulate large number of quantum states so we can use this entanglement so entanglement is basically two qubits they are connected together and connected in the sense that uh, measuring one will let you know that what's happening in the other side other side of the cube or what what's uh, what is the state of the other qubit right so we in the quantum computer we use superposition use quantum entanglement these are the basic phenomena and quantum superposition is enable us to uh, process almost infinite number of states simultaneously and entanglement enable us to process one state and uh, look at into the one state of the one qubit and find the state of the other qubit like that so these enable or these enable the scientists to build a system that could compute much faster or exponentially in comparison to the uh, conventional computers right so uh, using the quantum entanglement what we can do is we can build a system where we can transform information uh, to, we can transfer the information from one place to another and with almost almost what it with zero lag uh, zero lag in the sense that instantaneous like without any delay not even the speed of the light will come into picture the thing is that when two qubits when they are created together and not created when they are entangled together and one it at the one other place uh, second is at the other place so we can do quantum teleportation what we can do is we can send a message uh, so i think the image is not clear here but suppose you want to transfer some information basically some photon that you want to be teleported and you can uh, interact it with one photon which is entangled with the other photon so the other side the teleported which is which is there the photon is there it can get an idea that what this photon is doing so teleportation is only possible because of this quantum mechanics or quantum physics level thing that we basically teleports the state of the qubit instantaneously like transform the state of one qubit uh, instantaneously because two qubits are entangled this is basically the quantum teleportation okay this is the clear image right so there are two entangled qubits are here so basically measuring the one will get to will get us to know that what is happening in that second so two there are two qubits which are entangled now what we are what we are uh, doing is we are giving some information to this qubit there is some photon that need to be teleported and uh, we can just interact with this qubit and the same will happen on other side so we can take this advantage of this idea this concept and we can transfer the message a kind of it's a it's a hypothetical or a research thing but this is the concept of teleportation right okay so right so uh, as i explained before that using qubits we can process multiple information uh, simultaneously information at the same time how it is possible see if there are two qubits so how many states we can process infinite but we can use qubit uh, superposition with entanglement and we can have four kind of system four numbers four states simultaneously to process so if we have uh, one bit we have two states and with two states we have uh, with, uh, four number of state load it's a two to the power n states we could process with the system so this is the overhead that we get with the qubits right so what happens is that suppose if there is a 64 bit computer how many bits are how many information how, how much information it could process it's 64 bit but if there is a 64 bit quantum computer what it could do is it could process 2 to the power 64 dimensions which is a very 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 large number it's a much bigger number in comparison to the 64 
bit. So that leverage that we get from a quantum computer, that information that we process with qubits is much larger, right? Now, how we do that? We basically build some gates similar to our electronic or digital gates. We build quantum gates. So these quantum gates, they changes the uh, state of the system, uh, state of the qubit, and we could process information parallelly. Right. And then we build some algorithms. There are some, there are some, some algorithms like Shor's algorithm or Grover's algorithm. So these algorithms can be implemented using the gates, using the quantum circuits, so that we could evaluate all the answers simultaneously at the same time. Uh, am I audible? Okay. Yes, sir, it's audible. Okay. So, uh, the thing that I, I, I was talking about is that bit was a qubit comparison that if there is a 64 bit computer, it can process 64 bits only at the same time. But if if someone is building a 64 qubit quantum computer, it has almost 2 to the power 64 dimensions to process, which is a very, very, very large number like 16 to 10 to the power 18. And that number of state when we will process it, you can do much bigger computational thing in comparison to our classical computers, right? Second, how we do that? We build quantum gates. The gates process quantum bits. Basically, they change its states, uh, the phase and uh, the probability you could say from one state to other. These things will change. If we build quantum gates and the quantum algorithm, and they can process this, uh, process this simultaneously. So when all the answers are being evaluated and that quantum system it reached to a conclusion it in much less time second thing that if we add one additional qubit in the system the computational power of that system is doubled so for a normal traditional computer if you have to process double the information right digital computer normal computer classical supercomputer if there is a, it is if it is 32 bit computer and you want to double the computational power, you have to make it 64 bit computer. But if you have to double the power of compute, quantum computer, because it's two to uh, two to the power dimension, so then two to the 32 qubit to 33 qubit, the power will be doubled. You have to add just one qubit to make it double. right so how we can build a computer first thing that we need to actually realize this qubit so qubit till now although uh, we see this quantum physics quantum mechanics phenomena there but we have to find something which we can make qubit like we make transistors we use transistors or uh, you could say the switch, the gate thing to make a bit like that. We can, we have to make some physical uh, thing to make a qubit and then we have to maintain it, like uh, maintain the quantum properties of it. Second thing, uh, we should have some system which could manipulate it, manipulate like we can apply the gates and all, we can change the states and all of the qubit and then we have we, we, in a quantum computer we have a system that could measure its initial stage and measure its the final stage uh, all these states the stage you could say states uh, that can be measured so this is how a quantum computer is built so how do we realize qubits right uh, first is you could choose those electrons so spin of the electrons could be used. Then when an electron is trapped in an atom, in a phosphorus and all, one company is trying to use, build that. 
We could also use superconducting con loops that can be realized at qubits or energy level of a hydrogen atom or nuclear spin or nu uh, neutral atom. These are the atomic level thing that could be realized, like that could be made into qubits. I tell you how. Like uh, the Google IPMs, they are researching with superconducting loops. So when current is flowing in this loop and uh, they try to change it uh, using my microwave signal so that uh, the state of this superposition could be changed, right? So this is one way. That is trapped iron. So there is this company which is Iron Q. What is trying? What it is trying to do is it's trying to have. Uh, it's trying to make the electron of the outer shell of some atom to realize this qubit, right? Then Intel, which is researching on silicon quantum dots. Then Microsoft and Bell Labs, they are working with topological qubits and one company which is quantum diamond technology which is using the vacancies in the diamond atom so there are multiple ways you could try to make one qubit so this is the actual way the spin of the electron the superconducting loops the trapped ion the vacancy in an atom all these things exhibit quantum behavior because they can be made to realize quantum uh, systems or quantum qubits right okay so uh, although quantum computation uh, quantum communication because of the quantum entanglement the communication is immune to any distortion or hack, hack, hacking or something the reason being that in quantum uh, entanglement we actually don't do anything we there are two qubits and two uh, qubits they are apart or uh, distance apart so if you can send information if you have to send information from here to there we have to just work with this qubit and already the information will be there if we can build a system like this that would system become un unhackable right okay so what are the challenges uh, to build a quantum computer C. As I told, we have to maintain the spin of a electron, let us suppose. But electron and then its spin. Uh, do you think it's a easy to manage? No, because at that level we have to work at uh, superconducting level, like zero degree temperature, almost zero degree temperature. And it's not easy to manage that zero degree at or that very low temperature because even the atmospheric temperature the energy in from the atmosphere could change the state of the spin of the electron so that this is the biggest challenge to uh, make a qubit and maintain its state that's why uh, like someone asked right what is the error or precision in the supercomputer <coughs> Uh, what is the error in the supercomputer? Uh, so error is like because it's very difficult to manage those states then uh, we could there is significant error in comparison to the classical so we don't see much error in our normal computers like bits is, is getting manipulated because they are very stable but qubits are not stable and because of that the error comes into picture so it will take some time some years, maybe decades or something, that uh, a, a commercially available, not commercially, but usable infrastructure is there for everyone to use and work and deploy there some apps or those computational thing. But the quantum, uh, com the quantum computing is working. Okay, so if I have to say summarize everything about classical computer and a supercomputer. So the thing is that these two computational things are fundamentally different. It's not like one is uh, one is the bigger version of other, like uh, 
a, a bulb is a different from a candle although they both do the same thing so a bulb gives us a light a candle gives us a light similarly normal classical computers they do the computational thing but a super computer also do that same thing that we, they are fundamentally different in doing things so they have different algorithms to work with they have different circuits to work with they are different gates to work with and their physical realization is very different so they are two fundamental technologies which uh, do the same thing of computational thing right so how does a quantum computer look like this is the way this is the ibm supercomputer and which is now accessible through quiz kit uh, we can use these uh, actually we can run our quantum computer code in these quantum computers so this is this is the circuit of quantum computer and they have basically maintained almost zero degree temperature for this right so any questions till now uh, okay this there is uh, see quantum computing is is kind of any research area related thing so risk, there is no risk although there is some challenges to build a quantum computer risk is only that it might not work in future maybe in two three decades all the money will be wasted but i'm not sure i don't think this is this will happen the, there is no risk to build a quantum computer because we can do certain things with a quantum computer which can which we can never do with a classical computer uh, and security related things so security is like we will when will they have the infrastructure we, we, we will be able to build a secure infrastructure to access those things so it's up to those corporations who are building those quantum computers with your IBM or Google or Microsoft or Bell Labs so what securities they are put into this thing right okay so the last theoretical talk is that about how we can uh, do this representation of qubits and how we can actually work in maths so this is called direct bracket notion so to represent the state of a qubit so uh, how it is represented like there, there are two states let us suppose 0 and 1 and these are enclosed in the brackets like triangular back angled bracket and the alpha and the beta is it's a complex number this is also called the amplitude of the uh, you could say the qubit uh, or amplitude of the states of the qubits right and the square of these numbers is <coughs> is one so this is how using the bracket notion a qubit is represented in maths it's so a very simple it's like very simple com complex number thing so and um right so if you have to give the quantum state of a spinning coin which is in the air so we could write it like uh, uh, half of alpha plus half of beta in the air because there is the probability of it getting half and probability of it getting one probability of it getting zero so to get what is the probability that it will get head I'll do the one root two square, and if I have to find that what is the probability of it getting tail, I'll square the one root two. So this is how we represent a qubit in maths. There is this one block sphere representation. It's a kind of visual representation, and we just point an arrow in the space in 3D space at, at what is the state of the qubit. So uh, these are the four states. So, for example, you could see so there is this uh, one state zero, there is this one state one, and if the arrow is pointing in the zero direction, then we could say that this is the mathematical notation. If 
if the arrow is pointing in the other state direction of the other state then we could say that this is the mathematical notation this is how uh, this is the notion for spinning coin so what is the probability of getting head or what is the probability of getting going so this is one one way one another this is also one way to represent qubits in math this is called block sphere representation and these are some algorithms as i told before one is shorts algorithm other is this clovers algorithm so shorts algorithm is used for uh, to find the prime factorization and it could do in much less time uh, as i told before the clovers algorithm is used to identify elements in an unordered list so we know that if there is an unordered list or uh, not sorted list or not sorted elements in array and you have to find a particular element i have to search for particular element the order is o n for a classical computer but using the grover's algorithm we could do this at uh, o you we can we could do do this using o root n using the o root n order so which will take much less time in comparison to classical computer this is how uh, algorithm works and uh, you might get to know about these algorithm in uh, tomorrow's session right so how could we build quantum circuits like now we have learned about quantum bits and uh, how we can use these bits to build a kind of quantum circuit or quantum algorithm so basically to compute uh, to do the computational thing need data so data is represented in qubits then we have to do some operations so operations are done using quantum gates and then we have to do some measurements so that system we had we have to build so if we can do this we can basically do the uh, we can build a quantum circuit and we can do the computational thing right so what are quantum gates they are they, bas they are basically uh, a gate similar to normal gates in our electronics but they work with qubits not with bits uh, not with uh, a traditional classical bit sense and from these gates we could build quantum algorithms and so what we do is that the gates basically changes the state of the qubit and when they change the state of the qubit we could use these gates to build some algorithms and how we actually do this we use microwave pulse or actual realization that frequency of some electromagnetic wave that could change the state of the qubit and then we when we process the information we can solve some problem right so there are certain type of gates like x or not gate or hadamard gate or t gate so uh, this like your like we have our full adder gate you also have this hadamard gate c not gate like control not gate uh, it's a combo it's not two it's, there are two gates here right so we have different type of gates which is your bit flip or x gate what it basically it does is that it changes the probability of one state to other so it will give the probability of uh, one state to the other and other state to the first one then phase uh, flip gate which is your z gate gate and then h gate uh, t gate control not it's a combination of uh, multiple you would say multiple qubits and snaps so these are the different type of gates from these gates we build quantum algorithms and quantum circuits right so suppose there are q qubits here right and we do initialization so what what we do is we give them some states like what at what state they are and we then add some gates into the circuit like we process these qubits we change their state change their phase and all those things and then in the end we measure it when we measure it 
be uh, put in into a normal classical bits or classical register, registers because a qubit might have infinite state as existence it's it's measurable states is only two like one and zero right so uh, now in the third uh, in the last part i'll talk about this quiz gate and how we can code this quiz gate So Quizkit is a Python based SDK. Basically, it's a Python project, you could say, uh, which you can use to build some circuits and algorithm and not only simulate quantum circuits, we can also run in actual quantum devices, IBM quantum devices, which are available, right? And how, how we have to do this? That first we have to install Anaconda, then we have to install the quiz kit we can uh, use jupyter notebook so it's a basic thing but uh, if if people have worked with data science and machine learning thing that they might be knowing that all of what all this is it's very simple um, so This is the ticket GitHub package. There are it's an open source Python library which you can use to build simulate quantum circuit, and you can also run uh, this on quantum computer actual quantum computers. Right? How we have to do this? We have to first install Anaconda. Right? Anaconda is a package manager for data science project. So if you install it, you'll get all the libraries. Right? So go and download it, install it, and then install. Uh, after installing the Anaconda, you have to install pip install Qiskit. If you'll do that, Qiskit will be installed in your system because it's already there in my system. It's saying requirement already satisfied so you have to install anaconda and then install Qiskit. after that open your jupyter notebook right Yeah, so um, uh, Vincent sir, actually, you know, as part of our, uh, you know, the next session, next in the sense, you know, next workshop, we can have a, a dedicated, you know, the hands on on uh, Qstick kind of stuff, you know, because we cannot combine this because of, you know, the environment we need to have uh, every student has to log in and all the stuff. Yeah, sir, yes, sir. So we will have a dedicated session for Qstick, you know, so that people can get experiment. experiment. Yeah, if time permits. If you do this in with the talk uh, in the in person, I think it will be great. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll we can do that. Time permits, no, sir. The COVID permits, yeah. So, so yes. we, we will plan on that, yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Sure. Definitely, if the students and as well as the research scholars, if they're available on campus, and uh, definitely it will be very useful for all the uh, scholars uh, who's working, going to work with the quiz kit. It's a nice, yeah. If somebody sure. raised their hand, sir. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we'll have a quiz kit uh, competition also after that. Sure. sure Thank sure, you. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Abhishek, uh, just proceed. Thank you.
I think Abhishek is not audible. Yes, sir. Abhishek, you are in mute. I think please unmute yourself. Uh, I'm audible now. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you need to repeat the thing after Ganesh. You are. Oh, thank you, thank you, Ashish, uh, for catching up. Somehow I missed that. Okay. Anyway, thanks for joining today. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. So the thing is that I have successfully installed Qiskit in my system. I, will, I have already installed it, and then I have opened the Jupyter notebook. And after that, you have to create one project like this. I have to import the Qiskit uh, module and if that Qiskit is successfully installed and if I'll check its version so it's showing me certain uh, Qiskit components and its uh, versions like Qiskit AER which is a simulation thing, uh, Qiskit IBM Q provider which provides me actual quantum computer. So if Qiskit is installed, you will get some, some message like this. And after that, what you have to do is you have to, if you have to simulate it, then you don't have to go to the IBM, library, uh, IBM quantum computing site. Uh, if you don't have to simulate it like if you have to simulate it in actual quantum computer you can go to this quantum computing ibm.com and here you log in very it's very simple and then you'll get your token to work with ibm quantum computer you can co copy this token to work with actual quantum computer and wait Now, what you have to do, you have, you have to you have to import IBM. right? So you have imported the module IBM Q. Now you have to save your account here. and the token that you have copied uh, from this uh, API token and now we have to do IBM you dot load account so if I'll do that I'm good to go with uh, actual quantum computer So account provider for IBM Q is this IBM Q and this the group and then if you get this message now your uh, this Jupyter is successfully configured or your project is successfully configured with actual quantum computer. Now what we can you can do is you can uh, create some registers to work with it and create some gates with it and then ultimately build a circuit. So I'm importing every library. I'm creating one quantum registers register. So 
with this command i have created uh, two qubits so i have given two here so it's basically give me it will give me a list of uh, two elements basically they are holding two qubits now i also create two classical registers right so now there is now now i have created two qubits two classical registers and what 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 have to do i have to check like what all elements there are in the circuit or uh, how we can combine these elements or add some gates right so first i'll create the circuit okay right so next thing i could do is i could do the draw this circuit right so this is the basic circuit so it's not actually a circuit there are some elements in the circuit but they are not connected so we have this q0 uh, underscore 0 q0 underscore 1 and then our classical c0 right to draw this in better way we could use matplotlib it's a data analysis library So we have to draw this. So this is the circuit. This is how we work with Cascade. Uh, now, if you have to add some gates, or let us suppose had a mod gate to this uh, circuit, so what we'll do is that we will add add a mod gate to the uh, first qubit, which is. Y0. Right. And I'll if I'll do this again draw as I could draw draw. Um Abhishek participants are asking to zoom up the screen. Can you increase the font from the view section? Yeah. Is it is is it better now? Okay. Yes. And they can double click the screen for automatically to go a little bit. Where, sir? Uh, the participants, you can double click the screen. Therefore, okay. you can see view clearly. Please proceed. Please proceed. Yes, sir. So now I have added this had a mod gate in the first qubit. So if I have to add one more gate and combine this to uh, qubit to make entanglement, what I'll do is I'll add one control not gate. So the, our first qubit will be target and this will be will get the eventually 
the combination Okay, if I do this again, circuit dot draw output it into MPL. So this is the circuit right now. Okay. What what now I could do is I could create some simulator uh, and uh, then simulate our circuit in that simulator, which is So I have created this simulator using this AI AER module. Basically, this is the module provided by Quizquid to simulate the circuit. So I have created one circuit, and what I could do is I could simulate this circuit into the simulator provided by the uh, IBM. And how we can do this? We can do execute. circuit backend equal to simulator dot result and I'll store the result in a variable result right now I have to plot the result so I'll import uh, histogram from the library of uh, Quizkit. Okay, uh, what is a mistake? Okay. Okay, we have. I have to create one more uh, classical register here to add this in the circuit. I have created two. Mm. 
duplex anyway. So, yeah. Okay, so this is how we work with QuizKit. Like uh, we can make a circuit and draw it and add some gate and eventually simulate it, right? So any questions? Okay, I'm getting pmq.load account. I'm getting error. Uh, have you copied the token key from the website of IBM and added to the uh, your this one IBM dot save and what type of error are you getting? To do this uh, load account, you have you have to go to the IBM website, IBM IBM Quantum Computing dot com, Quantum Computing IBM dot com, and here what to do is I'll just log out. You get a, a token, your API token to access. Actually, you, you can skip this step right now if you are simulating in the system uh, to simulate in the Quantum Computer Unit this to token. Uh, So if I do the simulator, so this is the probability that I like get using the histogram uh, 0 0 with some probability and 1 1 with some probability. And if I have to do this on uh, actual quantum computer, then I have to do lo load account. And after that, it will give me some uh, IBM computers to access that quantum computers like IBM Santiago, IBM Lima, IBM Bellum and I tried uh, I did with IBM Bogato and then you have to execute this in uh, actual quantum computer so then you will get this result so the here the simulation happened in your system in a simulator and here the actual computational done in the actual quantum computer the difference here is that you see some error here this is the error that we get uh, if we work with quantum computers right okay so uh, Okay, I'll end my presentation here. Uh, any questions from this or how we can work this? This is the way we could uh, implement Shor's algorithm in QuizKit and we can run it. So these are the things that we can work with quantum computers. in the cover. Is it going to go? Is it going to go?
Okay, so uh, sorry, sir. I think there is a question from the question. chat, but please go to the plot histograms count. So, what do you want to ask here? Plot histogram count. This it basically uh, what it does is that after executing the circuit in the simulator, uh, we are just plotting the circuit using a plot histogram. So, what is the result in the circuit? We're taking that from result that get count and we'll plotting using the plot histogram so this is what we are doing after that uh, you could run the same circuit in the quantum, quantum computer also then you have to ibm dot load account and after that <clears throat> you have to check that what providers are there so you will you will do ibm q dot get providers and then find all the providers so there are these providers from uh, from ibm ibm san diego ibm lima and then you to select any one so select any one and uh, get this get that access to that uh, quantum computer and then you have to execute the same circuit same circuit that you have created here and <clears throat> put it into the quantum computer and then you have to monitor it so when you monitor it it may be possible that your job is in the queue so it might take few minutes four minutes five minutes or it depends on the queue so uh, it, it ran after two after the queue of two and then the result will come out so you can also plot these these results similarly as you simulated before like uh, in this histogram the only difference is that in this one you will get some errors also the probability of uh, 0.486 and 0.514 uh, for 00 and 0, 0, 0, 0.011 for this circuit it's simulation here so there is no error but the probability for 0.482 and 0.445 and then these two for 0, 01 and 10 probability it is the error in the uh, quantum computer so this is the thing okay i'll end my presentation here uh, Sir, thank you. Thank you very much. I think this is a wonderful presentation. They have given the, uh, the how this could be work in the uh, open source like a twist kit, like the inspiration of the twist kit, how this tool can be used for any other uh, research paper and uh, the research aspect also. So is it possible uh, being a, a engineering uh, faculty members is it possible to work, anybody is working with the machine learning suppose the, any classification algorithm could be able to incorporate with this uh, piece of it, sir? Uh, actually the thing is that we build a different uh, algorithms for this quantum computers so one this which is the Schwarz algorithm or the Grover's algorithm that 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 is there 
so the class for the algorithm is i guess it is tomorrow by arshad but uh, it's not like that we can uh, import everything from classical to quantum it's very different type of things so although we can process information and uh, things but it's not like we could do everything in those quantum computers currently it might with some evolution so the google's quantum computer which was in uh, nine 2019 it was kind of hardwired so it was made to solve only one problem so at that level the technology is so uh, we have th there is a evolution what we can do so there are some algorithms on those algorithms can be made to work in a quantum computer like solving some problems Hello, I'm audible, sir. Yes, you are audible. I think he dropped off. Okay. I think we can close the session if everyone is okay. Yeah, I'm closing the session. And uh, thanks everyone for joining the session. Uh, thanks for the college to providing me opportunity to give a demo and quiz kit and uh, talk about the quantum computing and uh, the <coughs> the quantum circuits and all. So Abhishek, uh, um, hold on, regarding, Abhishek, can you hear me? Uh, hello. Oh, uh, yes. So, so are you, uh, can you address all those questions? Yeah, I have addressed all the questions. Oh, it's all addressed. Okay, good. Okay. So. So what is next actually right now? Okay, good. So thanks Abhishek, uh, you know, for the uh, wonderful session about, you know, uh, the war view about uh, the qubit and, uh, you know, the quantum, uh, you know, some of the internal activities as well as uh, uh, things also. So um, I think, I think, you know, these are all uh, good one for uh, the students. Uh, uh, who are, uh, you know, part of this uh, call, like, uh, you know, they can, you know, uh, in a self-learning, you know, they can install QSKIT uh, and, you know, start uh, practicing it also without, uh, you know, any more, uh, I, mean, I mean, you know, you, you guys have to try, you know, and then, and then if there are any issues, uh, do reach us out and uh, definitely, you know, we'll help you out on that. And, um, and overall, like, you know, I think we covered uh, from yesterday and today, a um, lot of stuff, you know, initial, you know, the foundation stuff for you to get started. And um, certainly, you know, the tomorrow session will fulfill uh, some of the algorithm aspect as well as, um, uh, you know, the, the quantum machine learning aspect too. Um, and, you know, uh, some uh, linear algebra concepts also, you know, uh, Professor Satyanandan, you know, will be updating to you all. Um, Overall, like, you know, we have a, a kind of, you know, a stepping stone, you know, the foundational uh, enablement, you know, uh, we have done so far. And we hope uh, this one, you know, will help you to, you know, uh, kickstart the quantum journey uh, for you all. I see nearly 142 students, you know, staying back here and uh, participating, students and faculties, of course. And um, and suddenly, you know, uh, these, uh, these programs, you know, will help for you to uh, get a good quantum future. And, uh, you know, this is not it. Like, you know, we will, we will uh, yeah, tomorrow we have uh, two more hours of session. 
and uh, we will uh, we'll have a you know a kind of a plan forward too uh vincent sir uh, you want to address something uh, yes sir thank you very much sir i think i can unmute the sudha madam is a coordinator r sudha psnacet.ed.ed we'll say the pronounce out of thanks please sir so it's a really wonderful session so all the research scholars and who is doing going to do the projects and are going to start the research in this area of the quantum definitely uh, abhishek sharma and yesterday uh, the session was a very wonderful and today i think he is very uh, elaborately how the the kits quiz kit could be uh, installed in your system and as well as the how it could be uh, working for a uh, next feature level and i think there's tutorials also available i think and as we i requested um, uh, mr ganeshan sir to provide a video that also we'll share for all the participants who is uh, i think will create a drive and we'll share all the participants so participants are requested to fill the feedback so that we can send all the material all the stuffs which uh, the presentation and everything you can send to you so please send the feedback and yesterday i think we received the 160 feedback and i think today also we are expecting the same numbers so the final day we can conduct a quiz and we can conclude with the session by giving the certificates and other things uh, so sir uh, i think a request uh, r sudha yeah i found her now sir she was not there before okay uh, r sudha please uh, accept the invite r sudha please accept the invite yes sir will inform us sir Yes, so that madam, I think you can say the pronounce the vote of thanks. So thank you, sir. First of all, so it seems to be a great honor to propose the vote of thanks to all who have helped us in making today's session a uh, resounding success. So first of all, I would like to uh, thank our management for giving us and for supporting us for uh, for uh, this kind of workshops. so to uh, i would like to thank our chair person shrimati uh, k balakshmi amal uh, and then our pro chairman rotarian rsk raguram and our principal dr d vasudevan for, for standing as a pillar of strength behind us and i also like to thank our beloved hod for organizing this workshop and i'd like to express my deep gratitude to mr ganesh narang swami uh, ibm global head IBM Open Power Systems. I say thank you, sir. And I also uh, like to thank our distinguished speaker, Mr. Abhishek Sharma, data scientist, research, research scholar, Object Automation Software Solutions Limited, for making an excellent presentation and making this work workshop a very meaningful and interesting one. And who has led a, a spark regarding this this kit uh, installation and uh, all those. Uh, uh they uh, they more regarding this biscuit so thank you sir uh last but not least i am happy to express my thanks to our uh, participants staff members students and all the well wishers who have made this made today's event a success thank you one and all so thank you sir thank you very much thank you and uh, sir uh, we have a quiz now sir I think it shall be. Yes, now. Yeah, we'll keep it until tomorrow, sir. Tomorrow. Okay. Yes. I think we'll share the question. Okay. Then uh, we will. Yeah. Yeah, we'll close it up. Sir, uh, students, you now get ready for a uh, quiz tomorrow. Yeah, students, get ready for the quiz tomorrow. and uh, the winners uh, make the, uh, you know the good uh, compliments from ibm okay sure the top 3 winners will get a good compliments okay then
sir thank you sir uh, thank, thank you sir. very thank much you, and uh, we had a uh, one more i mean day to go and uh, we you know we are going to have one more day to go but uh, uh, the last thing people uh, you know need for quantum so the students can get started with quantum uh, related you know research and development thank you very much sir so thank participants you. Uh, thank you all tomorrow, for participating yeah. this uh, workshop thank you participants tomorrow you join in the same link and if anybody wish to join for the tomorrow session also you can register through the mail thank you very much thank, thank you, you sir thank you